Hello, welcome to Trophy TV. We're working our way through our player ratings or player review of the season, and we are now into our final section, which is the forward areas. Mm. Um, we know we've needed more goals in this area. We'd love a 20 goal a season striker, but we don't have one. But everyone has, yeah. Uh, but everyone was, wouldn't they, really? But um, we've, we saw this season, Ped, we saw the return to fitness of Dominic Calvert-Lewin. He's had a, a much stronger season this season mm. in terms of being healthy. Um, and obviously finished the season with a flurry. Mm. But uh, just overall, before we go into his numbers, good to see him back and available most weeks to uh, forever. Yeah, and he has been, hasn't he? I mean, I think... I think there's a diff. I think there's a difference between him being back and being properly fit, and I don't really think he we've seen a properly fit Dominic Carvalho till towards the end of the season. Mm. I think sharpness, confidence in his own body, those elements have returned. The way he jumps, the way he chases down things, just the way he controls the ball in general. I think that sharpness has come back. I don't think it's been there all season. I think it's been evident, um, and I don't think we use any centre forward whether it be him, better or Schmitty in any way that gets the best out of him. But Dom, what Dom does when he's at his best is hold the ball up in such a manner that he does bring other players into the game. Mm -hmm. um, so it's he does finally look more himself. And next season, I think we'll see a lot more of the real Dom. <clears throat> let's just hope we get to see that. <laughs> yeah, well, let's have a look at his numbers from the season. Uh, 32 games. Uh, seven goals from an XG of 12.93. So he's underperformed there. Two assists from an XA of 1.55. I think that might be. There's a heat map there. You can see moving, obviously, all over the place, which is a further mm. demonstration of his, of his fitness. But he did have, obviously, a very barren run. He yeah. 25 games without a goal, which <clears throat> is a hell of a lot. It um, is, but I think his heat map shows there that he's not in the box enough. Well, yeah, and that's that's not on him. That's mm. because of the way we play. That's because mm. if it's a lot, a lot of hold up playing because and because of the we don't the wide men don't get into areas and the midfielders don't back them up and mm. so there's not enough in the box. Um, so it's been it's tough. It's tough mm. for any and that yeah. I mean his ex he's, he went he's down as one of the the worst performance strikers in Europe. I do think that was a very particular part of the season mm. where. He just couldn't. He just couldn't get going, and he mm -hmm. and he had chances, and um, mm -hmm. he simply wasn't taking those chances. And I, I do think that happens for a lot of strikers. I just think that it's a mix, really, of him coming back, not being this ultra amazing striker, also, and snatching the chances as well. That mm -hmm. that you know you think and that you think how many am I going to get today? And I also think just a little bit of luck as well. I mean, like the goal that got taken off from by Jack Harrison. That's but that's pure luck, isn't it? That, that I don't think Jack Harrison took no, the no, goal off. It got taken off. And it that's the point. Taken. That mm. got taken things like that, they, they are mass the goal at Spurs that got taken off him. Mm. They're massive moments for a player, his confidence and things like numbers. Do you know what I mean? It's like if you added those two goals into the fact, does it be do, you know, that's gonna massively improve those things and both of those, in my eyes, are his goals. And, of course, the one was disallowed and one was given to Jack Harrison. But it is funny the way, the way obviously, with stats and, and how reliant we are on, on numbers and things like that, how, how these can, things can change the course of somebody's season or how we look at them differently. Yeah, well, obviously, if, he, if the goal, certainly the one against Spurs, that it's Harrison, that's in the middle of that run of not scoring, mm -hmm. isn't it? And we saw once he did get a goal, mm -hmm. he went on a good little yeah. run, but... He did, like I said, he did finish the season very, very strongly. He looked sharp, dangerous. I mean, his first goal to break the duck was the penalty, wasn't it? It was an important penalty mm -hmm. up at Newcastle last couple of minutes and dispatched that well. And then he follows it up with a, a bit of a fortuitous goal against mm -hmm. Burnley, which, you know, just shows you when you've broken that run. Yeah. The next minute, one hits your foot and loops in the net when he's had other moments where he you know, can think of Newcastle at home where he's blazed over from underneath the crossbar and things like that yeah. where they were bread and butter for him at that one time but good to see him get back 26 starts in those 32 mm -hmm. games the manager clearly established him as the, his number 9 and yeah. the one he wants to play but have you 
Do you think at times Sean Dykes has been overprotective of Dominic Calvert-Lewin in some games, like in terms of taking them off a little bit too early in matches, or do you just think that they're monitoring in real time how his body's yeah, performing? Yeah, it's, it's right. Well, what I would say is there's been occasions where he's come off that he should never have come off, mm. and it's changed uh, the last 15 minutes of games, even mm. the last game of the season where it doesn't really matter. I, I just think as soon as you take him off, that allows Arsenal to just camp in our half because mm. we can't hold the ball at all. And there's been other moments like that during the game where it's been similar. Now, I can't sit here and honestly say that, that he should have been on the pitch because mm. the day, they, might be, they might be looking at it at real time. They might be looking at the red zones. They mm. might be looking at training and all those things and being told and sticking to it rigidly. What we got told 12 months ago was there was a before he came back towards the end of last season, there was a plan for him. They were sticking to the plan. They'd sort of identified what the issue was mm. and they were just going to deal with it and they weren't going to let anything get in the way. he come back, he got the injury against the Wolves. Against Wolves. But I think it was the same plan again. We're sticking to this. We know mm. what it is. We just have to grin and bear it. And bringing better in really helped the patience of fans. Mm. And, you know, he, went up, he didn't play against Chelsea and he had the cheek injury, which was different. But yeah, it's, it is that side of things where you're just like, I'd love to have seen him stay on the pitch. But for all we know, for all we know, that's a big part of it. Uh, it's a big part of his, his, his recovery or play 75, play 75 minutes of, of every game or nearly every game is better than only playing a quarter or half the season, isn't it? You know, so well, he averaged 68 minutes per game across the season. So, mm. uh, seven goals, finished with a sofa score rating of 6.9. Um, we talked about 12.93 expected goals. Uh, that's something he has got to tighten up on. Mm. He missed 16 big chances right. across the season. So, he'll know himself he's got to do better than that. But if he'd have taken half of them and finished with 15 goals, then A, Everton would have been in a much healthier yeah. position. And he would have had people would have been saying what a season he's had. So, um, you know, two assists from the next year, one point five nine. Uh, just having a look at other stuff. Yeah, two yellow cards, a red card, of course, that was rescinded. <laughs> um, yeah. So, I mean, what would you rate him overall of the season? Is that about right? About a seven? You think? It'll I mean, be... there's a real number to this, but I haven't got it right now. Oh, of but, course, for your um, end. Yeah, all right, all right. No, no, I, I just think That's that. No, video. he's not not blameless. He did mm. go, he did go through a, a large part of the season. I, at the time, my personal thought was, you stick with him, mm. you let him work through it. I know it was different opinions, and that's mm. fine. Um, I always thought he was our best striker, no matter what. And I think he ended up showing that he was our best striker. And sometimes you have to play through it. Sometimes you need to be left out. Sometimes you need to come off the bench and do something. Different things happen. Mm. Different things get you going. Um, so, yeah, it's not been a brilliant season for him, but we all know the challenges he faced mm. during it um, and over the last two two years or so. And, of course, the challenges that the team has faced. And, yeah. I mean, the irony is when he was left out, he then come on and scored a pen and got going again. Yeah, so. Yeah. It is what it is. Mm -hmm. um, Everton brought in Beto last summer to try and help mm. with the load. Again, a more sensible fit than trying Neil Mopai. <clears throat> Frame-wise, wasn't yeah. what the manager wanted. Beto, obviously, six foot four, Very raw yeah. coming into the game. He's, he's done all right. Let's have a look at his numbers across. There are uh, 30 games he's been involved in the Premier League. He's got three Premier League goals. From an XA of 6.79, no assists from an XA of 0.55. I think that might be. Mm -hmm. His sofa score rating across the season is 6.73. Mm. Nine starts, so nine mm. starts, three goals, yep. whatever you. He averages 32 minutes a game yep. over the season. So, you know. <laughs> Cause, yeah, because he replaces them. Yeah. No, well, that's it, isn't yeah. it? So you can look at three goals and go three goals mm. and. And obviously his XG is saying that he should have probably had six or seven. Um, he just looks very raw, doesn't he? Beto missed eight big chances, so half what Dom did, but still, still. A, I know strikers or oh, Harlan's missed crazy amounts, mm -hmm. so that's what strikers do. They don't take yeah. every chance they get quite clearly. 
created three big chances mm -hmm. for other players. Um, drib fifty percent of his dribbles completed, which he's quite good at that. Nice. Um, he's raw, isn't he? Let's be honest. He's not as refined as Dominic Calvert Lewin. Mm -hmm. I think that's what when we were saying at different times in the season, what would you do? Mm -hmm. I think you always were. Well, Dom's just better at keeping the ball or whatever, but Beto, I think, is better with balls down the side. And it was it, it. The mad thing with Everton is whenever he replaced Dom, we didn't change what we were doing no. enough, which didn't benefit him mm -hmm. as well. But what have you took overall from him this season? I'll be honest, I'm massively disappointed with him. Mm. I, okay. I honestly am. Yeah, I, yeah. And what I mean by that is, I didn't see enough from mm. the start of the. <clears throat> in fact, I thought he was Take better when he first came <laughs> in <laughs> than what he finished with. Mm. I thought when he first came in, he was a rawness, but he was a, he was a, it, it, I was excited by when right, he, I remember players. when he played against, he came, the first Premier game against Sheffield United, and I was genuinely, some people was, off, I was he? genuinely mm. like excited by what I saw, and yet towards, by, towards the end of the season, and maybe it had just been a physically hard season, I just, I wasn't excited by the, mm. and, and you know, by the prospect of seeing him, and the manager started bringing Chimiti on ahead of him, mm. which I think is, is a real, statement because mm -hmm. the manager isn't as we've discussed in a previous video about Dan Juma I don't think the manager's particularly bothered about saying to some to 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 someone it doesn't matter how much you came into this club for you you're not offering what I want mm -hmm. and or you know whatever <laughs> the wages are or whatever and I find that quite interesting that he preferred Chimiti towards the end than, than than Beto and I do think it's because it is because of the like for like attributes of a Schmitty versus Beto, and you would have thought, because it's that easy to go, oh, yeah, but you've got to give Schmitty a bit of game time. You've got to give Beto a bit of game time. If you want him to be less raw, you mm -hmm. have to get, you have to, you have to knock those edges off. Mm -hmm. I also don't like the fact that he falls on his ass every time mm -hmm. someone gets anywhere near him, when I do believe there's, there's opportunities to score and take people on. I do think he goes down far too easy. Some of them are, might be legitimate fouls, but if you've got the whites of the goals in front of you, I'm, I'm not a, I'm not a massive... Well, like the Burnley one, though, where he was chopped down, it was a, pen, it was a red card, the lad did foul him. And I thought he should have had a pen at Luton. I know people were like, oh, he we went over a bit easy, but he did get tripped. But you're right, son, mm. sometimes he is looking for the foul. And it's like, I can remember one game, in fact, it was might have been West Ham, home, where a ball got played up to him. And he just he just ignored the ball and went and started backing yeah. into the defenders. Yeah. Like, run to the ball. Yeah. Run to where the ball I, is and then run at them. I, I, so. I just also I just get yeah I just get the sense that he just hasn't got the game figured out as such of mm. like what he needs to do and that is because he came into football so late mm. there is developmental parts of his game that are not and there. it is quicker and more physical yeah, in Serie course. A isn't it of course and um, I don't think we play the way we play helps him but I also have seen us play the ball down down the down the channel and in not being able to get past the last centre back, he has got elements of his game that you, as I said, I've been excited by, but I just haven't seen it enough. Um, whether he kicks on, whether he stays at Everton, that'll be a question. Because if an offer came in from another, like a big Italian club, you could see that happening. It's happened before. Um, there's been links already to him maybe moving back to. And there's been links track. that he's not happy with the game time. Mm -hmm. Why would you be happy with the game time? You know, what did you say? Nine starts? Nine starts. Nine oh, starts. You know, six starts. No, nine starts. Nine yeah. starts, one and three. Um, yeah, I, I, why would you be happy? You've come from a team that you that you were playing regularly in, and now you're you're not playing at base, basically at all in a team that's struggling. And you've seen this, the end of the season, a younger player replacing you as the set coming off the bench. Mm, so it's, it's going to be very interesting whether... Listen, Sean Dyche might might go right, might be sitting there going, "If you want to make us money, sell him." Mm. You know, yeah. I want to keep down the Carvalho and mm. sell him. Get as much as you can for it. If we have to take a hit, we have to take a hit. Mm. But I, I just don't think this this is going to work for us. Sean Dyche seems to be that kind of fella, by the way. That if something's not working, he'll he'll take the he'll not he personally will take the hit, but he's willing to go. I didn't sign him, mm. and I'm not going to play him. But it'll be interesting to see what they do because he's another one. He didn't come in at the start of pre-season. Mm -hmm. Came in at the end of August. Um, so, you know, with a pre-season, mm -hmm. six weeks, can they just concentrate on what he's doing? Well, they'll have to if they're not going to sell him. That's where the work I, will be I done think, and pre-season. But you might I, be that. I think he would be a, 
better would be the kind of striker if if you're making loads of chances mm. and there's opportunities mm. left, right, and centre. Yeah. I just I look at him as a striker for us and think, how much do you make? Can you make on your own? Yeah. And how much? How much do you need to? You, you are reliant on your teammates. Teammates, and how often are you going to have to hold the ball up and do the teamwork? And it's, I just don't see the balance being correct for the way we are. And you have to look at it like that, don't you? What fits the team, not, mm. not fits the player? Or is the player so good that he dictates how you play? And I don't think he's good enough to dictate how we play. So, mm. very again, it'll be a very, very interesting summer for him because we, we know Dom will be wanted. And if he doesn't sign his contract, does that elevate Bettle to be the number one striker? Because mm. you certainly can't City and go Schmidt is going to be the no. one. No. Interesting. Well, yeah. controversially, Abdullah Dekora, he's been put in with the forwards. Controversial. But I suppose at times he, he basically is Just the second. Just means he's got more plays to talk about in this video. Exactly, he's the second striker. Yeah. But uh, Abdullah Dekora, he was hugely important for Sean Dyche when he came in. Hugely important again last season. 32 games in the Premier League. Seven Premier League goals from an XG of 8.77. Two assists uh, from an XG of 1.51, is that? Mm. Something like that. Um, yeah, 1.51. The Corey, the manager still hasn't figured a way out to play when the Corey isn't available. He's had two seasons where it's happened. I know <laughs> two chunks of a season uh, that Sean Dykes has been here. In the 18 months, he's had two separate it, mm. you know, periods of time mm. when Evan haven't won a league game without him. I know we won an FA Cup yeah. game without him. But, but the Corey was absolutely on fire in December. Mm -hmm. Had six goals by the game at Burnley yeah. and got injured at Burnley and then was missing. Came back against Villa mm -hmm. mid-Jan. Got injured against Villa and was missing again. Um, and then only really he scored the last game of the season at Goodison, the last right. home game. The header from uh, Dom. Done all the work for him. He couldn't miss really. But he didn't, to me, when he come back in the side... He just didn't. He just mm. wasn't in the same kind of form or had the same kind of impact as he had in the opening part of yeah. the season. And actually, ironically, his best performances for me was when he was deeper and near the end yeah, of the season. Yeah, I thought yeah. he'd done much better as a number eight than he was higher up. Mm. I've got an issue with the core as the ten all the time. In not what he brings, he brings that energy mm. and he gets your goals. So no issue that, with that. But I think for Everton as the Unless we can get two real goal scoring wingers in, mm. or Dwight McNeil can get back to his numbers from last year, and we get a, a, another winger in who's got goals. We almost need someone who can open up the play mm. from that 10 and also weigh in with the goals. Because we've had a period after Christmas where we had Dominic Alvaloon, who's the striker, not scoring, and the core, the number 10, not scoring. Mm. And then we had Andre Gomez in there, who doesn't score. Pab Mafrik against mm -hmm. Palace and you're going, where are the goals? Because mm -hmm. the wingers don't get a lot. Our number nine ain't scoring. Our number ten isn't scoring. Yeah. And he's also not creative. Because a lot of people who play in the ten are either creative or they they get you a lot of goals. The core eight for the first part season, brilliant. That's what you want. He's a second striker mm -hmm. getting goals. How have you seen it overall with him? And the other thing we have to look at is he is getting older. Yeah, yeah. And it's still a problem when he's not available to mm. us. Oh, it's a difficult one, and I don't know whether Schmitty's getting not not groomed to play in that position, mm. but just becoming some version of that. More he come on against Sheffield United in yeah, that position. More of an attacker. Very well, on, remember he came on at Newcastle as well. Mm, yeah. Um, it's a difficult one. Um, he was great up to the Sheffield. It's up to the Burnley game, mm. and then as you said, one game in literally two months. Mm. And we didn't win. We didn't win games at all. And that's that and he stopped and then he came back and it just he just just didn't seem to have the same kind of rhythm. Mm. Um maybe it was down towards not making chances for him either. Those those but I think early on he was busy, he was making runs, he was getting himself into nice areas, the ball just seemed to be dropping to him. And that just seemed to go away in the second half of the season. Um no, we would definitely we definitely need someone who can play as a split striker who can mm. Also open the game up for us. Yeah. Even if it's just to take the pressure off him at times mm -hmm. as well and, and use him in a different position because we've had two sections of seasons now when he's not been available yeah. and we've, we just haven't had a clue how to play, have we? 
No. Um, it's almost like a happy accident as he, how he fell into the Corey <clears> playing in that role. It was like from day one, wasn't it? And it worked and he kept them in the side. But no one's been able to come up with something of a similar in a similar vein. Mm. Um, so I don't know. We It's something we have to look at going forward. And mm. I know, as I said, mentioned Chimiti there and I know like McNeil's been mentioned, but you have to be part centre midfielder and part second striker. Mm. And that's the difficult part of it, isn't it? Balancing that up. And the Corey does have the athleticism yeah, to does. get round the pitch. And as you mentioned there, there was games towards the end of the season where he was, instead of coming front to back, he was going back to front. Mm. Picking up the ball, running with it, getting and getting into the areas. But we'll have to wait and see. As I said, a season of two halves. Um it got a goal in Sheffield United, as you said. But mm. this sort of disappointed in the end, isn't it? Because because he never he never picked up that form again. Good goal return, though. Obviously he got six yeah. the season before and he got seven last season. So that is a good goal return. Yeah. If he can match that again next season playing in a, in some different mm. roles as well then obviously we'll be we'll be pleased with that one and he is of course uh, staying for another season mm. so it is a problem I think Sean Dyke and the, the coaching staff have got to come up with though what mm. happens if he isn't available mm. or if he's needed to play centre mid because yeah. we've got injuries or whatever so it, it's something we have to look at uh, Yusuf Chimiti we're going to go on to you've mentioned him mm. a few times already young player coming from sport in Lisbon we didn't know what we were going to mm. see of him. But the manager has used them. I mean, we'll look at his numbers here. Uh, 18 games mm. he's been on the pitch. Some of them, I'll, I'll tell you how many minutes now, because it's not very many, but no goals in XE of 0.72, no assists from an XE of 0.25. But very much... It doesn't look great, does no, it, when it looks you put terrible, it in the raw data? This is one of them where, for me... That you know, them numbers aren't great, but I think I've seen with my eyes little bits and pieces mm -hmm. where I look and think, young player, yeah. like I think he's got he's definitely got something. He's got the attributes, he's tall, he's mobile. He's had moments against Sheffield United when he come on a few moments where he was dribbling, he, he he's whipped one just mm -hmm. over the bar, he's won a great little run and cut it back for James Garner, who couldn't finish it. Little those little moments. I thought against Brentford, he was up front on his own. Mm. I thought, you know, it was a whisker away from getting on the end of McNeil's cross shot. Some of his layoffs, he created a couple of chances for the core, right? Mm. Good hold-up play, good link play. Lots of promise, mm. but obviously, you know, not wonder kid levels where he's got five no, goals in, no. in 18 games and you're going, I can't wait for him. But there's something there to work with, isn't there? I think there's the something teams? there. Um, and I think the manager does like as I said, that he does have the attributes that fit in with the team more mm. than Beto does. Um, and I think what you did see was you did you did see some, you know, when he played games, you saw uh, an advancement from one game to the next. Yeah. The Ar When he came in against the Arsenal last game of the season, he was he was a little bit disappointing. Mm. But I think for, for most of those games, there was... He did. He did improve a little bit and just... And it, he seemed to get a massive confidence boost from starting... Um, against Brentford mm. which obviously probably felt like he'd arrived then because he yeah. started a Premier League game uh, and it was a big game as well with I think Dan Juma was on the bench that day as well so the manager could have gone with Dan Juma up front mm. I suppose or Michael Keane um, and he's decided to go he's decided to go trust him mm. I think that's a lot of faith and he's he's had other opportunities since then and yeah I mean uh, the manager in a different year might have bedded him in more times during the season mm. But obviously it's conspired against them this season because of maybe when there was moments where you think, no, now's the time, and then you get it by a points deduction, and you're like, yeah. can't really do that now. Gotta yeah. go back to gotta go back to um what I don't know. Yeah. yeah, it's back to uh, you know, basics and stuff. So yeah, it's it it'll be interesting. The second season will be interesting at Everton. Second season will be obviously the one where you expect them to you always get that with a young player. Everything they do is good, isn't it? Mm. And if they make a mistake while well, he's a young player, yeah. he'll learn from that. Second season is Right, you've played, you've trained all year with professionals. What have you really got now? Because we're expecting something now. Yeah. And I think that's, I think that's fair. Mm. I think that is fair, even though he hasn't played loads of minutes. Um, 
And we'll see, we'll see what happens. Three seasons for them, isn't it? I'm just aware I didn't do the Corey's numbers, sorry. 6.91 was his sofa score rate, uh, averaged 82 minutes a game. Mm. 32 games played, 32 games started. He's not a sub, is he? Um, the XCB done 8.77, missed 10 big chances. The Corey had two assists, created four. Um, ball recoveries, four and a half. Pass and accuracy, 79%, which is a. People say it's loose with the ball, but 79% mm. in bad. Uh, Yusuf Chimiti's not 6.9 on his rating, was, wasn't it? Chimiti's so for score rating 6.63 um, minutes per game, averaged at 13, and that's massively gone up because he played 89 against Brentford. Mm. Um, one start, of course, which was mm. Brentford. Um, his numbers are, are, are not. Exactly amazing. Created two big chances. He only missed one big chance. Uh, interception. Yeah. Yeah, I think with him, he, you know, he's a young player. I think there's potential, like mm. you said. I do think he can probably play off the striker because mm. I think his touch is, is good and he, he's a good dribbler. And we'll see whether Sean Dykes thinks the same. I think I know in an ideal world, people are saying, oh, it'd be good to get him out on loan, but then. Who play, you know, not like Everton are blessed with loads of strikers, so we'll have to see what happens with him. But pre season, big pre season mm. for him, he's another one, Absolutely. wasn't, didn't have a pre season with Everton, mm. so he's here this season and, and hopefully he can get some, you know, yeah. get the training, get the games, get the goals in pre season. That gives him confidence to move on. Uh, and finally, another young player uh, scored his first Premier League goal for Everton this season, was a bit par player again. I think if Everton would have had different financials mm. um, and maybe if one of our two more experienced wide players would have stayed than mm. Damari Gray or Al Alex Awobi, then Lewis Dobbin would have gone out on loan. Mm. I think he'd had a year at Derby on loan. The original plan was a year in the Championship on loan and then to look at him. Yeah. But obviously, the, the predicaments Everton are in right now, they couldn't do that. So let's have a look at Lewis's numbers. Uh, involved in 12 Premier League games, one goal, the the key goal, I guess, against Chelsea, the one that killed it off. Mm -hmm. From an XG of 0.29, no assists. 0.43, is that a 1-3? Um, Lewis Dobbin, to me, is still raw. I think the jury's still out on him as whether he should be involved right now. I think he's got something. I think Sean Dyche has said that he's definitely got something, the directness. I think he's used... I know he he's played a lot on the left. I'd be tending at the moment if he was still involved with Everton first team to be mm. using him off the right because I think he's direct enough and got the pace to get himself half a yard. Mm. I think if he was throwing balls across with his right foot because there's a tendency when you're playing off the left-hand side... Once a defender knows all you want to do is come in on your right, he's quite easy to mark. Mm. His left foot hasn't been strong enough when he's mm. gone on the outside. But I do think he, he needed another year on mm. loan just to continue his development. I mean, he's, he's the Chelsea goal was obviously mm. a good one and, and he's been important at times to just throw on for 10 minutes mm. and that. But I do think we have also probably stunted his de development this season as well. What's your, what's your take on it? I don't think he's anywhere near the level. Yeah, I just don't. I just, yeah. You've got to be honest. I don't think he's anywhere mm. near the level. His goal against Chelsea was great. Mm. I just can, can you honestly think of a, a time when he's come on and really not even made a difference? Just I can remember loads of times he come on and barely touched the ball, mm. and I, I can and I can remember times when he's come on and he's had opportunities to take players on or or. Just do the right thing, and he doesn't often do the right thing. I just think, like you just said, he's been, he's not a wonder kid, mm. and he needs games. And we've starved him of those games. Mm. This should have been a development year for yeah. him. Don't forget, last year he was at Derby in and League the, One, and the, the 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 reports back where he's either really good or he's really bad. Mm. He hasn't got a consistency in his yeah, game. Yeah. And he's a winger, mm. so he hasn't even got a consistency as a wing, like a, a winger's consistency, <laughs> where he's got like one thing that he does, like well, where gone he... from League One to the, exactly. to the Premier League, and that's not his fault. No, that's the club's fault again. Mm. That's the club's fault for putting that pressure on him. So mm. similar to what happened to Ellis Sims, mm. you know, eighteen months ago, it's the same kind of thing. It's like 
these players are having their... It's mad because people go, well, he's getting an opportunity with the Premier League club. And it's like, but he's not, because he's not he's not playing enough. And I know mm. he's had an injury second half of the season, but he ain't playing enough to develop. Okay, he's training every day. But I, I, how much of, like, he's training every day yet, but I, he's sitting on the bench and then how many opportunities is he getting? A few minutes mm. off the bench here and there. It's not the same, is it? And I just think that, I think we've, we've wasted a year because we didn't um, prepare properly again and I think he's he's had to stay at the club when really he should have been at a championship cl club this season laying in his trade mm -hmm. another year going up another year getting that experience getting that experience of being kicked a bit getting that experience of doing the right thing mm -hmm. because you can learn so much from doing the right thing at the championship and knowing what to do in certain moments whether to keep the ball go on a run yeah. take a shot all yeah. those things that it's all development we We'll dip into the under twenty ones. My God, no one gets touched. Mm. They just pick up the ball and do what they want. Mm. And it's almost like in the under twenty ones and even in the under 18s It's like you watch the games. the The opposition gets the ball back when it goes out. When they've when you've wasted your opportunity, mm -hmm. you know the under twenty ones is, is very very similar. It, except it's probably Salatized just it's you. probably just a little bit more physical. Mm. So you step up to the Premier League then, and players are actually pressing you or tackling you and are hugely talented and are hugely talented so and so when they get the ball they're not giving it away mm. or when they get the ball they're making the right decisions and I think again this is where we are we've, where he is is that he doesn't make too many right decisions mm. and that's experience it is it, experience well? mm. it is it's development mm. it's development of how to Everton have been absolutely terrible at coaching players from the age of 16, 18 to 21. Mm -hmm. They've been absolutely terrible. We have, or 18 to 21. No, 18 to 21. Where we have, there's a name that you get excited about. And we've st there's still a few knocking around the club where they're like dead excited. Mm -hmm. And they get to 18 and it's just like, boom, it's a brick wall. Because mm -hmm. we can't seem... We've got to, a couple now where we're coming through the 18s yeah, and, and they we, have to be managed. And properly. we can't seem to develop these players. Mm -hmm. And then we wonder why they leave, go somewhere else. And suddenly everyone's like, oh, he's actually a good player. Him. He's mm. not a bad player. They've unlocked something. They've given him games and they've developed them mm. the right way. So, um, for me, it's been a wasted year. Yeah, I mean, like you said, he's, had, he's got his first Premier League goal, so no one can either take that away from no. him. But in terms of a year's development for him personally, he's 21. He's still a, <laughs> still a good age. Yeah, He's still got an opportunity to go. And, and I think Everton have got a responsibility to him this season to get him out on loan to a championship club and get him playing regularly and it is that decision then can he make those decisions can he get shots away can he create goals for others can he nail down a proper position where he is <laughs> and um, if he does that then we'll see Yeah, we will see his sofa score rating 6.67 uh, minutes per game 22 on average he started one because I mean a league game got one goal one big chance missed uh, <laughs> Created one chance. And yet 1.7 ball recoveries. Bloody going on in here. Like Bob, Bob Fleming. He's on either side of me. Um, so, yeah, there you go. That is our review of the forward players. Let us know what you think on each of the players mm -hmm. we've gone through. Um, how do you think they've done? Make sure you hit the subscribe button. Give the video a thumbs up. And uh, we'll see you later.